After eight years of the stormiest relationship with Israel in our history, do better days lie ahead? Is the Middle East on the verge of war? Will the Trump administration trash the deal that Obama made with Iran? Will ISIS attack Israel? And will we ever move our embassy to Jerusalem? For a discussion of these issues with a White House correspondent, stay tuned. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. My colleague Nathan Jones and I have a very special guest in the studio with us today. He is Bill Keenig, who has been a White House correspondent for the past 16 years. He is president of a news website called World Watch Daily, and he publishes a weekly report called Keenig I View from the White House. He is also the author of a brand new book titled Revealed. The subtitle is Obama's Legacy. Bill, welcome to Christ in Prophecy. Thank Glad you, to have you. Yeah. So good to have you on, Bill. Good to see you, Nathan. Thank you. Well, let's jump into this chapter. You have Chapter 3, Israel's Existence in Danger and Middle East Chaos. Okay, Obama is out of the presidency now, but how did he leave the relations between Israel and the United States? Well, it was a contentious relationship. Contentious. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of pressure uh, early on. When Hillary Clinton was the Secretary of State, she had this idea, let's just start putting, let's squeeze on Israel immediately on settlement construction. Mm -hmm. And so that started things off on the wrong track. And then uh, uh, just right after he took office in January 2009, uh, Obama went to the Turkish parliament and then uh, went to uh, Cairo, Egypt on June 4, 2009, spoke to the Muslim world, talked about how great Islam was and the importance of Islam and the relationship here in the United States. And then uh, just one thing after another, pressure in Israel when John Kerry became Secretary of State. Uh, not being treated very well, no formal press conference uh, with the Israeli Prime Minister. Uh, he made Yahoo. him come through the kitchen, didn't and he? At one time, he was kind of had to come through the kitchen. It was kind of unannounced. And, and then he left and went up and had dinner with his family. Uh, oh, treated him like dirt. Yeah, didn't treat him very well. So, uh, obviously, Netanyahu is very happy about the new yeah, administration. Yeah, I'd imagine. Uh, but they treated him with full honors, right? Totally. Yeah. Uh, you know, Press conference the, right after the first visit to the White House. Press conference, I was there for it. It was fantastic, and the the spirit was very good. But what happened is, what is he? What how has he left the Middle East? Yes, the yes. Iran nuke deal, Dave. That we've talked about a lot is a horrible deal. Uh, it it makes uh, the Middle East more dangerous, and it definitely makes things more dangerous for the state of Israel. Do we still know what all is in that deal? Because I know a lot of it was secret. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, there were some side deals to help get it through. Shipping bullion. Uh, uh, you know, uh, money that uh, went over on jets, the cash, at the time of hostage uh, release. Um, and also uh, the short range missile capability. I mean, they're, they're firing missiles right now that's a violation, violation of, of, the, of the UN resolution mm. and this agreement. Uh, on and on. And uh, just before I uh, came on the program, I noticed uh, Iran right now is uh, working on ICBMs that can put Europe in the, in the United States. If a, if a Republican president had done that and oh. shipped billions of millions of dollars, they would have crucified him. Mm -hmm. Crucified him. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the good thing, Dave, we know <laughs> this, a Republican administration would never have cut that kind well, of deal with Iran. No. You know, we had to run up against the ropes. I have a good friend in Israel, uh, Mordecai Kadar, who's a 27-year student of the Middle East uh, for the Israeli Defense Force in the intelligence area. And he said uh, Iran was up against the ropes, using a boxing terms, and we let him off the hook. And a t t horrible deal. Iran is now in charge of the Iraqi military. They've uh, increased their strength in Syria. They're uh, moving weapons of, of uh, mass destruction or potential mass destruction into Syria, uh, attempting to get weapons to Hezbollah, and uh, have been empowered completely by the Iran deal. When, if ever, is Israel going to do something about this? Uh, well, you know, they were very close to doing it when Obama was in office. Uh, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, uh, October 2008, right before the election, uh, the, you know, Pentagon leaks. Uh, 
Secretary of State Clinton said don't do it. Uh, Panetta was even telling the world he'd be surprised if uh, Israel didn't hit Iran between April and June of 2008, which is just absolutely wow. inexcusable. Wow, leaked it. Yeah, leaked it. Well, you had mentioned in your book that you thought Israel would be forced eventually to do a preemptive strike, right? Yeah, they will eventually. And okay. what's interesting... There'll be no and, choice. And, and uh, what happened is they've uh, been put in a position where every Sunni country right now, the short-range missile capability of every Sunni country, uh, or excuse me, the short-range missile capability of Iran puts every Sunni country that borders the middle uh, of the uh, Persian Gulf at risk. Yes. I mean, this is a very... Mm -hmm. uh, a uh, very dangerous time. So are you saying if Israel uh, hits Iran that Saudi Arabia is going to side with, with relief? Well, here, here's the, here, <laughs> no, here is the good news that came <laughs> yeah. from Obama wanting to get out of the yeah. Middle East and the Iran, Iran deal is the Sunnis are working with Israel. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, United Arab Emirates, and Jordan have been working in conjunction with Israel because they know Israel will not put up with Iran, and they couldn't trust Obama and his administration. Mm -hmm. And now the good news is the Trump administration has the best, most realistic, pragmatic security team in history now Praise operating. Praise the Lord. Uh, Mattis, McMaster, mm -hmm. uh, Pompeo at the CIA, they have people that fully understand the number one threat to Israel, to the United States, to the international community is the state of Iran. So uh, we're going to see... And some, they're not afraid to say... Islamic terrorism. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you Huge. sound pretty Huge. optimistic then that our relations with Israel are going to improve under a Trump presidency. Oh, with, without a doubt. Without They've a doubt. already started to improve uh, Excellent. significantly. And I think also it's uh, the, Sunni, the Sunni countries are so uh, excited about the Trump administration's security team because they already have a good working relationship with Mattis, with McMaster, with other generals. Uh, they know that these guys are warriors. We had the warrior mentality taken out of the Pentagon during mm. Obama's time in office. The warrior mentality is back in charge of the Pentagon, of our national security, which is a key to our national defense as well as our good friend Israel. Praise well, sooner or later we're going to have to let the world know that we mean that. Yes. I mean, when you've got Iran threatening every day to attack uh, Israel, and when you've got the crazy guy in North Korea shooting off missiles. All sooner or later, we've got to do something that convinces them that we we really mean it. Well, it's going to happen. What was interesting is General Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, his first trip was over to South Korea and yes. Japan. Very first oh, one. Interesting. And he said that we're here to defend our allies. It was a message to North Korea and to China, and that uh, we uh, think this China usurping this these islands that's Japanese territory. We're going to defend them. And the next trip was to NATO and to meet with the NATO leaders saying that we're committed to NATO. Everybody needs to pay, pay their fair need share. To pay their own mm -hmm. way. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a great meeting. Mattis is incredibly popular. He even got 90, approved 98 to 1 in the Senate. Wow. Which is, gives you an wow. idea. To, even though he's called Mad Dog. Even though he's <laughs> called. He, and he said the media gave him that name. He, yeah. he doesn't fully appreciate it, but the guy's a warrior. But he's also an intellect. He's read probably five or 6,000 books. He understands history. McMaster's is an out-of-the-box thinker. Uh, these are very positive things. Um, Pompeo, great uh, Christian congressman that's now head of the CIA, uh, uh, was probably the most outspoken member of Congress about the bad Iran deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he's already been over in the Middle East. Uh, well, every president good, in recent years happening. has come in saying, I'm going to solve the Middle East crisis. And he sends all of his people over there, and then it doesn't happen, and he gets irritated with Israel because Israel doesn't give enough. Yeah. It's, now, is this going to happen to Trump? No. Uh, it won't be the same. I mean, John Kerry had the attitude. John Kerry was so egotistical. He believed that the only <laughs> reason there hadn't been peace the last 20 years because he hadn't been working on it. Oh, okay. Uh, he thought he could handle it himself. He didn't even listen to the, the, the people of experience. And John Kerry comes up with a bunch of plans uh, that basically had already failed before. It was almost like John Kerry had been on another planet for the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah. It came in and said, let me try, let me try this, boss. But I mean, seldom do you see the left and the right in Israel agree on yes. anything, but they agreed that Kerry made the situation much worse than it was, and it, it was uh, disastrous, uh, even to, through the UN Resolution 2334 and some final things that they did. But, uh, you know, I think uh, one good thing, uh, number one, I, I am convinced that uh, Trump is, uh, wants to move the embassy uh, to Jerusalem. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, he is very pragmatic, and he's well aware of the fact that you keep the two-state 
plan on the table, that's not a good move. No. Take it off the table, just like a real estate. If you're working on a real estate deal and you keep giving and giving and giving <laughs> and they don't counter, take it off the table. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. was interesting is right after he had his meeting with, uh, with Netanyahu at the White House, he said two state, one state, whatever they want to do. Yeah, what so they want to do. All of a sudden, the UN and the yeah. EU <laughs> and the G20, everybody uh, went I'm nuts. Having a heart and, attack. So. And, uh, you know, sec, uh, Ambassador Haley said, no, no, he still believes in two state, but he's going to do some out of the box thinking. And then uh, Tillerson, Secretary of State Tillerson, was at the G20 meeting. He said, no, no, he still favors two-state. Well, then the following week, Trump said, I do favor two-state, but it's up to them to do what they want to do. As, as it should which be. Is, which as is the way be. it should be. But Absolutely. The way I look at it, it to do. Yeah. is this is a very start, smart strategic deal where Arafat and Abbas virtually had almost everything they wanted, and two-state has been on the table forever. Mm -hmm. So if they get, don't accept it, Take it off the table. Mm -hmm. Very smart move. The bottom line, though, is that they don't really want two states. They no. want the annihilation of Israel. Absolutely. You go into the Palestinian uh, Peace Center there in Bethlehem. Uh, the peace Israel, Center. Yeah, <laughs> Peace Center. <laughs> and, and it's not, you know, they, they continue to call it Middle East Peace. You know, the, the whole part, give me a break. This is not about Middle East Peace. Even the Arab League just a couple of days ago said, big mistake if the United States moves their embassy to Jerusalem. Who are you to determine <laughs> where the United States puts their embassy? Yeah. Yeah. We, and the United States wants to put the embassy in the capital of Israel, which is Jerusalem. Yes. So anyhow, Dave, this is exciting days. Welcome back to Christ and Prophecy, an interview with White House correspondent Bill Koenig. Bill, uh, right before the break, you mentioned about moving the embassy to Jerusalem. I, I want to go back to that for a moment. It seems like just about every president we've had in recent years, including the Bushes, uh, said they were going to move the embassy to Jerusalem, and then as soon as they're elected, they just back off and seem to forget about it. Uh, what is the problem here? Why is there so much reluctance? Is it a fear of Islamic terrorism? I've even heard recently that some have speculated that the Israelis don't even want us to move the embassy. Well, uh, number one is the t terror. I mean, in 1995 when that resolution was put in place, uh, Feinstein and at that time her aide Dan Shapiro, who ended up being Obama's uh, ambassador to Israel, uh, put that stipulation in that it's up to the president every six months, if necessary, to determine if now's a good time to move the embassy. And every time they don't because of fear of um, outrage in the Middle East among Muslim countries. Well, there's no doubt some of our embassies would be attacked. Uh, very, very likely. But, uh, but should, I should that fear no, guide our policy? No, and I think, I think what's uh, developing right now is a coalition of U.S., Israel, Sunni countries. Okay. You know, Israel's been working closely with the Sunni countries out of their fear over Iran. And Saudi Arabia always has the attitude that Israel will be hit first with a nuke, we're second. Mm -hmm. When in reality, Saudis probably be hit first. Mm -hmm. Israel would defend themselves and be prepared to defend themselves. So, um, I think the U.S.-Israel coalition with uh, Sunni countries in the works. Yeah, uh, explain this though uh, for our viewers. Uh, uh, Iran is a Shiite country. Uh, Shiite, which is yeah. about 20 percent of Islam. Right, and all the rest are Sunnis. Sunnis, and, and so they're, they're in all the countries. And they don't like each other. No, they, <laughs> they they have a horrible dislike for each yes. other. And uh, what's interesting is the Iranians are very smart. I, I was talking to a, an Iraqi. He said that the Sunnis, Iraqis are chess are checker players. The Iranians are chess players. Mm. They're mm. very smart. They're very strategic. They're very patient. And that well, sure what, took us to the cleaners in the deal uh, we made with them. <laughs> they they saw how desperate Obama and Kerry were to do a deal, as well as the other members of the yeah. P five plus one. Yeah the other European countries, and they just out negotiating. Plus, I have an Iranian friend in D.C. that says, you know, these guys go to school mm -hmm. and get their masters and PhDs mm -hmm. in negotiations. Yeah. And they are masters at frustrating you. And once they do agree to agreement, they never fulfill the agreement. Well, speaking of the agreement, well, what, do you think President Trump is going to kill the Iran deal? What he's going to do, and that's a good question, Nathan, is they are going to hold them accountable for the deal. For the deal. Okay. General Mattis said this during his testimony uh, for Secretary of Defense that we're going to watch Iran very closely and hold them accountable. And if they screw up, 
then that's it. What do we do? We sink their ships, uh, bomb I don't know their what's facilities, right now, but something's economic work with these missile uh, okay. uh, shots lately, and this possibility of an ICBM that be able to hit Europe and the United States. Wow. Uh, there, there's some serious uh, concern about uh, this. I mean, every every Sunni country right now is at risk because the short-range missile capability of Iran has increased dramatically over the last five years. So all those oil producing countries that produce 25% of the daily oil that the world consumes are at risk. Mm. Well, now let's go back just a moment to the movement of the embassy because you were about to make a point and got interrupted there. Uh, you said something about the situation has changed. I think they might, I think Dave, what they might do is in this U.S. commitment uh, to this coalition, security coalition, they might say, we want to move the embassy to Jerusalem also. Okay. I don't know how they'll work Other that nations. in there, but they'll try to water it down a bit where it's not such a big deal, even though the Arab League just mm -hmm. said, you know, no way, this would be the worst possible thing. This would have an effect on world peace. Give me a break. You guys can't <laughs> even get along yourself. <laughs> I heard General Jones a couple years ago talk about the importance of Israel making a deal with the PA. And I said, General Jones, 74% of the PA is Hamas. <laughs> and I said, give me an example of a country in the Middle East that knows peace. And you call this Middle East peace? This isn't Middle East peace. Oh. This is a joke. This is a problem, Dave. The Arab League says, don't move the embassy to, Jer uh, to Jerusalem. And if you don't, then it, this could lead to uh, world, world problems. This would lead to the worst possible time. Give me a break. Yeah, it's a threat. Yeah. Well, There's I think the bottom line in the Middle East is, and I really believe this with all my heart, the bottom line is we want, the Arab world wants the annihilation of Israel. They don't want a two-state situation. They've already got two states. Jordan is a Palestinian state. Yeah. The majority of the people there are Palestinians. They already have a Palestinian state. They do. And they, they said, well, we want Gaza. Give us Gaza, will there be peace? They pull out of Gaza and what happens? It immediately becomes a missile launching pad. Same thing going to happen in, in the West Bank if yeah. they pull out of there? Well, exactly. That's exactly what Netanyahu uh, said uh, before the disengagement of Gaza is we're going to have missiles raining down on the cities. That's exactly and, what And happened. the hypocrisy of the world in this is just beyond belief. Uh, when you consider the fact that Israel has a million and a half uh, Arabs living within Israel who have full citizenship rights, they vote in the elections, they're in the parliament, they, they get welfare, they get medical care, everything. A lot better than in the Arab countries. And yet, no Jew can live in an Arab country. Yeah, absolutely. No Jew can live in an Arab country. Yeah. And, and, and they're saying, well, these settlements are terrible because if we ever have two states, then there'll be Jews in, 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 in the Arab state. Absolutely. Well, come on. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And plus, you know the importance of those mountains in Judea and Samaria. Oh, yeah. And the Golan Heights. I remember some of the leftist journalists in Israel that were furiated with Netanyahu for not making a peace deal with Assad and giving up the Golan Heights. Yeah. Can you imagine? You know, five, six years ago. you imagine what it would be like today? If, Constant if missiles raining across the Sea of it Galilee. It would be a disaster. Well, I was on, would probably not exist. I was on a flight one time when a guy next to me started uh, uh, lecturing me about uh, when he found out I was a supporter of Israel about how horrible the Israelis were and how they were mistreating the Palestinians and how they needed to give back the Western uh, West Bank. And, and I sensed he didn't know what he was talking about. So I said, uh, where is the West Bank? He said, well, you know where the West Bank is. I said, yes, I do, but do you? <laughs> I said, you said they ought to give it back. Now, where is the West Bank? Tell me where the West Bank is. He said, well, you know, the West Bank of the Nile River. Nile? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I mean, yeah, it's very easy to pontificate absolutely. about Israel. And, and I said, do you realize that if Israel gave that back, Israel would be only nine miles wide and it's in narrowest point? There's no way it could, uh, could ever defend itself. Yeah, well, he didn't know any of that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a problem. Many times people that defend the Palestinians don't know anything. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> of any significance. They don't know it. Well, do you believe that ISIS is on the ropes, or do you think that they pose a threat to Israel? ISIS uh, will continue to be a threat. I think that they are, uh, thanks to the Kurds. Um, yes. The Kurds are amazing people and amazing fighters. And uh, if it wasn't for the Kurds, uh, ISIS would still be strong and getting stronger. Um, ISIS is always a threat because of uh, Lone Ranger events, uh, like what we saw here in the U.S. or what we saw in Paris and, and Nice and other places. Um, ISIS will take their, they will move off the battlefield and into public sectors. Uh, and that's a big problem with ISIS. You never fully defeat Islam. And I think radical Islam, I think that's why Israel over the years has done a good job. They, they have an attitude, we can't defeat them, but we have to manage them. Hmm. And when you say you're going to defeat ISIS and defeat Al-Qaeda or defeat the Taliban, it's not going to happen. But you can 
defend yourself against them by security, by keeping them in specific areas. Unfortunately, right now, the Taliban has moved back into a I position know. of influence now uh, in they Afghanistan. They took a town, right? Yeah, oh, in, in Afghanistan, as, as they were prior to 9-11. Uh, same thing with ISIS. ISIS has really been hit hard. And, but I mean, how about this? Iran and the United States are fighting side by side in Iraq to defeat ISIS. <laughs> and Iran is calling the shots in the military. I, I have a friend that's uh, father was a general be, uh, before um, Saddam Hussein took over, who now lives in the U.S., said that she was there interviewing uh, the director of the Iraqi military. And he said that he takes his orders from Soleimani, who's the head of the Al Quds force out of Iran. So this is what's challenging about Iraq right now. Mm. Uh, and the fact that we put $3 trillion plus in the Middle East, and especially in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, is how do we move Iran's influence out of Iraq, or how do we move that influence away from Syria? Which, and, and that's why we have to do something with Iran soon, because it's only going to get worse. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy, an interview with White House correspondent Bill Koenig. Bill, can you tell folks how they can get in touch with you and your ministry? Well, thank you. Thank you, Nathan. Appreciate it. Our website is watch.org. That's W A T C H.org. And uh, we post news 365 days out of the year on world news that's biblically relevant. And also put out a weekly news report, Koenig's Eye View from the White House, that goes out every Friday. Excellent. Uh, Bill, before we sign off, I, I, there's one crucial question I've got to ask you. Israel is one of the smallest countries in the world, about the size of the state of New Jersey, only about 300 miles long, about 75 miles wide. It is a country that has a very small population of six and a half million Jews and maybe a million and a half uh, uh, Arabs. It's surrounded by 350 million Arabs who want it destroyed. Is there any hope for Israel? Well, Dave, as we, as we know, um, <laughs> there is hope because the God of Israel will protect them, defend them, he neither slumbers nor sleeps. Neither yeah, slumbers or sleeps. Person. And as watchmen, as we all are, uh, we keep uh, informing people on what is happening biblically. Uh, this is the most exciting time of biblical history. It's mm -hmm. playing out right before our eyes. You know, I used mm -hmm. to speak and, uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago that you could relate to, we might have two or three final day events in play at the same time. Today we have everything in play. And it's accelerated at a breathtaking pace. And the time clock is Jerusalem. And every nation in the world wants to divide the city of Jerusalem. And every, virtually almost every nation in the world wants to give Judea and Samaria to a future Arab state. And all that's fulfillment of prophecy because in Zechariah it says, in the end times the whole world will come against Israel over the issue of Jerusalem. Absolutely. Jerusalem will I become mean, we're a seeing burdensome Bible prophecy stone. Fulfilled. Absolutely. And Absolutely. you know, you look back on history and the Babylonians tried to destroy Israel, and the Medes and the Persians tried, the Romans tried. It, all of them are in the dustbin of history, and here's this tiny little state. It's the focus of the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when someone throws a rock at someone in Israel or with the Palestinians, it's front page news all around the world. If there's a suicide event, it's front page. If there's a peace event, or if, if Israel starts building homes in Judea and Samaria, <laughs> front page throughout the world. Proof Every there's major a God. Leader. Yeah. Proof it's there's incredible. A God. A proof that this tiny little country, the size of New Jersey, is as biblically significant to Israel as the God of Israel as ever before. Uh, that was really impressed upon me the other day when I was reading some book. I can't even remember what it was now. And the fellow said, you know, just stop and think for a moment. What if a prophet had gone to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, in the end times, the most important nation in the world is not going to be Egypt. It's going to be that little group of slaves you've got out there working for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Their country. <laughs> Your country, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what's happening. It's so exciting. You know, we've been watching this for a long time. But it's so exciting. I mean, it, it helps keep things in a healthy perspective. Well, you just mentioned something that's so important, and that is that uh, a couple of years ago I, I wrote a book on the signs of the times called Living on Board Time. And I got 22 Bible prophecy experts to answer some questions for me. What is the most important sign that we're living in the season of the Lord's return? Well, uh, of course, they mentioned Israel being the, the cornerstone of end-time Bible prophecy, because that's the focus. Absolutely. But they said, really, there's something more important than that. 
And that is that for the first time in all of history, we see convergence, all the signs coming together for the first time. It indicates we're living on board time. Absolutely. That's exactly what's happening. Convergence. And, and also this year, 2017. Yeah. We have some historical patterns converging in 2017 and 2018. Uh, 2017, this is the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem. That's right. Next year is the 70th anniversary of Israel becoming a state. It is it, the heavenly, the signs in the skies and the heavens are aligning. It is, it is an amazing time. And we're so blessed because we are a small percentage of people that attend church or, or even understand the biblical significance of the times we live in. We are such a small minority that fully understands, Dave, that from Genesis to Revelation, that's the Word of God. And it's, uh, it's awesome to watch yeah, the, this play the, out. the real tragedy, and I wouldn't want to get you started on this because you, there would be no end to it, but <laughs> the real tragedy is that the vast majority of Christians, both Catholic and Protestant, that's are right. attending churches that teach replacement theology that God's washed His hands of the Jews has no purpose left. Exactly. Left. Exactly. How and can you believe that when you regather them from the four corners of the earth? Exactly. And they're the ones that are standing with the international community calling on Israel. These are Protestant Catholic churches and the Catholic bishops calling on Israel to leave the occupied land <laughs> or to leave the Palestinian land. Get I knew you'd get started. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. our time is up. Yeah. And Bill, we thank you so much for being thank with you, us. Dave. You've been a real blessing. And folks, that's our program for this week. I hope it's been a blessing to you. And I hope you'll be back with us again next week, the Lord willing. Till then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Bill Koenig's book, Revealed, Obama's Legacy, can be yours for a gift of $20 or more, including the cost of shipping. Mr. Koenig has been a White House news correspondent for more than 15 years, and his book contains a Washington Insider's summary of the horrible legacy of the Obama administration, all written from a biblical viewpoint. It clearly reveals how President Obama served as a Muslim apologist and an enemy of Israel while doing all that he could to promote the ungodly agenda of homosexuality and abortion. Further, Mr. Kading documents how the president used the U.S. military for social experimentation and succeeded in weakening our armed forces immensely in the process. And that's only the tip of the iceberg as Mr. Koenig further documents how President Obama undermined America's judicial system while running roughshod over our nation's constitution. The book ends with a thought-provoking chapter entitled, Will America Ever Recover? To get a copy of this very important book about the spiritual condition of our nation, call the number you see on the screen between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday, or place your order through our website at lamblion.com. Again, the book can be yours for a gift of $20 or more, including the cost of shipping. Ask for item number P580. Are you receiving our Lamplighter magazine that is published bi-monthly? Each issue contains many articles about Bible prophecy. You can start receiving a digital copy of the magazine via an email free of charge. Sign up at lamblion.com. Are you living with hope in the end times? Make plans now to attend this year's annual Bible conference and banquet on July 14th and 15th. Speakers include Dr. David Reagan, Don Perkins, Pastor Glenn Meredith, Dr. Tommy Ice, Pastor Andy Woods, and Dr. Ed Heinsen. Register at lamblion.com today or by contacting us at 972-736-3567. Hurry, seating is limited. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.